to welcome everyone here tonight. Sure, it's good to be here. If you would, I'll have you to stand together. We're going to sing hymn number 166 at Calvary. We'll have the ushers, if we could, to come on forward so we can receive the evening offering tonight. We'll have some ushers to come forward and receive the evening offering. Calvary, hymn number 166. Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died on Calvary. Mercy there great and grace was free pardon there was multiplied to me there my burden soul found liberty at Calvary by God's word at last my sin I learned then I trembled at the law I'd spurned till my guilty soul implored Turn to Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burden soul found liberty at Calvary. Now I'm given to Jesus everything. Now gladly on him as my king. Now my rapture soul can only sing of Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burden soul found liberty at Calvary. salvation's plan oh the grace that brought it down to man oh the mighty gulf that God did span at Calvary mercy there was great and grace was free pardon there was multiplied to me there my burden soul found liberty at Calvary. I thank God for that mercy tonight. Oh, amen. amen. Y'all stand. Y'all, y'all are standing together. Y'all go ahead and fellowship with each other. We'll have Janet to come up and sing for us tonight. Y'all pray for Miss Janet. She gets ready to come. Y'all go ahead and fellowship together. So we'll fellowship together.
time. Y'all just pray for me again. Shepherd gaze in wonder while angel voices sing. This night of nights have come and brought the world the long awaited King. The earth is filled. must have broken God's heart for the future he could see yet he formed the hands and feet knowing one day they'd be nailed to a tree so all the world gift came from above for God so loved the world that he gave his only son Jesus baby Jesus with a tear of love Uh, to give us life and uh, to die on a cross for our sin. And we just want to praise the Lord tonight for his wonderful blessings. Uh, I have uh, handed out uh, these uh, prayer guides for this week, uh, the week of prayer for our international missionaries, uh, which starts today. Uh, it goes all the way through all week long. It uh, gives you a different, uh, a different missionary, a different place uh, to pray for uh, all week long as we trust God together and we believe God together uh, to uh, work around the world. Guess what? We serve a God who is not only here. He's everywhere. Amen? How many of you believe tonight God is everywhere? Would you say amen? 
And uh, we have that opportunity uh, to be a missionary's life uh, through International Mission Board, through uh, missionaries that we support uh, uh, that are uh, uh, independent missionaries who are out in the field. Um, we want to thank God for that opportunity God gives us tonight. Uh, we are praying uh, for those who are losing yourself uh, for the loss, and we're watching uh, that story. And uh, also, if you want to go on the website that's provided on this, you can also see uh, that same prayer request. And I'm glad tonight we can trust God one for another. Amen. Uh, so at this time, let's go to the Lord in prayer, ask His will to be done, and God just to speak through our missionaries, and then tonight speak to us uh, through the Word of God. Father, thank you uh, for being so good. God, we just want to praise you uh, for your blessings in our life. Thank you for the power of the gospel, Lord. I'm glad, uh, Lord, that you know every single thing about every person in this building. God, but we are, uh, God, just amazed that not only do you know everything about us, but you know everything about every person around the world. God, I praise you, Lord, for the opportunity you give us how to be part of their lives. How, Lord, that we, through missionaries, God, I pray right now you bless our missionaries on the field. How, God, tonight we pray, Lord, for Larry uh, Pepper, Lord, and these that are serving uh, around Larry, Lord, that you would bless him. We pray for an anointing upon his life. How, God, we pray for every territory where we have missionaries that you have bless them, anoint them, fill their lives with your presence, God. I pray, Lord, that you, God, would just put a hedge about them as they serve you. And, Father, God, Lord, we just pray that there would be a true a reviving, Lord, of lives. People coming to know you as Savior and Lord, our God, through our missionaries. Lord, we pray you would bless them, anoint them, and fill their lives. And, Lord, we're here tonight to hear your word. And God, we ask you to speak to us. Bless Brother Mark, God, as he brings the word. Lord, I pray, God, that we would be challenged. Lord, we would be convicted. We would be comforted. But all those things that only the Holy Spirit can do in our lives. And, God, we want to give you praise for all your blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Aren't you glad for the word tonight? Amen. Amen. You pray for Brother Mark as he comes. Come on, brother. Amen. Praise the Lord. He got up and I spoke and he sat back down. I started to do it again to see if he would. Amen. Amen. You pray for Brother Mark. Very familiar passage of Scripture tonight. Isaiah chapter number 9, verse number 6. Uh, I guess we'll just continue the theme of Christmas. Uh, as preacher started this morning, but we'll talk about talk about that just a little bit. Uh, but uh, what my heart is tonight is to magnify uh, the name of Jesus Christ. And if I don't know about no title, uh, if you want title, I guess uh, we'll say it's all about Him. Amen. And uh, ask the Lord to help us tonight. Uh, we'll read Isaiah chapter number nine, verse number six, and then we'll we'll go back and catch a few more. And a bunch more, really. There's a bunch of verses uh, that have got uh, pinned down. Uh, so, uh, but God help us tonight to uh, magnify Him, to honor Him. Thank you, Teeny, for singing that. And uh, we do worship uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. I understand that He came as a babe in a manger, and we honor that. We glorify God in that. Uh, but that man grew up, and uh, that's where Isaiah's at. Isaiah saw what he was going to be. Isaiah knew, well, not what he was going to be, but who he is. And uh, he shares that with us. And we see this verse of Scripture a lot of times uh, on postcards. Uh, nothing wrong with that. We see it a lot during uh, Christmas. We see it a lot of times uh, throughout the year on different things. But uh, it's pointing uh, to our Savior. And uh, everything that we say and do needs to point to the Savior. Amen. Uh, we need to uh, identify who He is in our life. And, uh, and that's what Isaiah does. Let's look at these verses of Scripture, or this verse. And then we'll, we'll jump in and get started. Isaiah chapter number 9 and verse number 6. The Bible says, For unto us a child is born, and unto uh, us as a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. As we enter into this Christmas season, it is easy to... Uh, be reminded, we need to remind ourselves of who He is. He did come as a babe in a manger, no doubt in my mind. He was born of a virgin uh, in Bethlehem's manger, no doubt that we, uh, we rejoice in that, we celebrate that. But tonight, we're gonna, I want a little glimpse of who He is right now, what He's doing for us, and uh, how He can bless our lives, how He can encourage our lives, how He can strengthen us and help us. Uh, the, right here when Isaiah said this, it was a very dark time uh, in history. People were uh, without hope. 
And Isaiah, what Isaiah is telling them of hope, he is reminding them that there's coming a day that there's hope. Uh, Listen to me tonight. Hey, we have hope tonight. Uh, We're not miserable tonight. We have hope tonight. And that hope is found only in Jesus Christ. And uh, we need to understand His name. There's a lot of things in a name. And right here He begins to talk about the names. But I want us to uh, look at this. In verse number 6, it gives people hope. It gives us hope that He's wonderful tonight. And we'll, we'll talk about that in just a minute, a little bit more. Uh, he's wonderful. He's a counselor tonight. The mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. We're going to talk about some of these tonight and ask the Lord to help us. But today, right now, there people need hope. The, uh, and I know we, we all look good uh, this evening. We've... We've, we've took a shower today. We've uh, made, uh, probably 95% of us took a nap today. You know, we're feeling pretty good. Hey, but I'm telling you, they may be some people in the church house that need hope tonight. You know, we come in and we, we're good at smiling. We're good at putting on a, uh, a face, you know, uh, to hide a lot of things. Uh, but tonight, uh, Isaiah gives us hope in this verse of Scripture. Uh, a lot like today, uh, the people were... Uh, had no hope. If you'll look with me in verse number 2, we're going to read it also. Look with me what the Bible says. This kind of gives us uh, a picture of what's going on during this time. It says, The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. That great light, by the way, is Jesus Christ, the hope of heaven. Uh, preacher was talking about it this morning, the star of Bethlehem. It lit it up. You know, uh, He was born in a manger, but hey, God spoke to them by a star. He gave them a sign of the star. It said, I've seen a great light. And they dwell in the land of the shadow of death, and upon them has the light shined. Aren't you glad? Thank God for the light shining. Amen. And uh, we're going to look at this and ask God to help us tonight as we look into these verses of Scripture. But they walked in darkness. But the hope is and the encouragement is that they've seen a great light. It's not that hey, God uh, could have left them in darkness. God could have never shown them anything. But God in His love and His mercy and His uh, compassion on us that fails not, the Bible tells us, hey, that He shined that light upon our hearts and our lives that we may know Him. That is the whole purpose of that light shining is that we may know Jesus Christ in the free pardon of sin as our Savior, as our Lord. And that is the purpose of why Jesus uh, shined that light. I, the hope of every man is that they will see that great light, which is Jesus Christ. We need to understand. And look right here. Let me just read this verse. 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. It said, "...in whom the God of, the, of this world has blinded the minds of them uh, which believe not, lest..." the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, whom is the image of God, ha- uh, should shine upon them. That is our prayer tonight. That is our hope tonight. That people walking in darkness, uh, that people that do not know Christ, that do not know Him as Lord, as Savior, as King, uh, those people that are walking in darkness tonight, it is our hope, our prayer uh, tonight, that that glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ will shine upon their hearts and their lives. Listen, I know in my own life I wanted to change. I had a desire to change. But it was not until that glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ shined in my heart and shined on my life that I understood who Jesus was and I seen that there was a better way. Hey, when the lights are on, we have illumination. Amen. You can see some things. And it takes the Lord Jesus Christ illuminating our heart that we identify sin, that we understand that I am a sinner, we understand where it's at, what's going on in our life, but not until the Lord Jesus Christ shines that glorious gospel upon our hearts and our lives. And so our prayer for a lost and a dying community is uh, that we pray that the Lord will shine the glorious light of the gospel upon the hearts and lives of those that are walking in darkness. Uh, do you realize tonight uh, they are those that are still walking in darkness tonight? They are those uh, that have no concern for their own mortality. They, they are out there that don't care anything about the Lord Jesus Christ. 
There are those out there that do not know Him as wonderful. They do not know Him as a counselor. They do not know Him as the mighty God or the everlasting Father. They do not know Him as the Prince of Peace. They do not know Him. But God has shined that light upon my heart, upon your heart. And it is us that takes that glorious gospel the gospel of Jesus Christ, and let it shine upon their lives, we should be shining. Amen. We should be shining for the glory and honor of Jesus Christ. It was His mercy, His grace, His compassion that shined upon our heart. If you've seen that light, then we have the responsibility of sharing and shining that light on others. Listen, I am not talking about beating them in the head with your Bible. Say amen right there. That is not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is that you love them. Hey, you love them. You share with them. You talk with them. You become a friend to them. Uh, that you share Jesus Christ with them. Hey, they may be stooped in sin, but that does not mean we don't associate with them. That means that we just shine the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ on their hearts and on their lives. We live it in front of them. Say amen right there. We have to live it in front of them. We just can't just show up and uh, think magic things are going to happen. Listen, we need heavenly things to happen, and that is when the Lord Jesus Christ... We need heavenly things to happen that only can come from Him. So we need we need to ask God to help us. We've seen that light. If you've seen that light tonight, would you say amen? Hey, we understand tonight. We sit in a church house tonight. We have hope tonight. Oh, the message that preacher preached this morning. My goodness, we have hope tonight of all eternity of spending it with Jesus Christ. We have hope tonight uh, that He walks with me. Well, I have hope tonight that I'll, He'll never leave me nor forsake me. I have hope tonight that He's going to help me in every situation. There are those that do not have that hope tonight, and they need that hope tonight. And the only way that they're ever going to see it is when that light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ shines on their heart and their life. The Bible told us right there, if the gospel be hidden, it is hidden to them that are lost. That is 2 Corinthians 4, verse number 3. So we see the danger of us not living and shining the gospel of Jesus Christ. If our gospel be hidden, it is hidden to them that are lost. Listen, we're doing a, a grave danger if we do not share the gospel of Jesus Christ with everybody. You say, well, I've witnessed to them before. They didn't listen to me. They ain't going to listen to me now. Listen, you never know when the God is going to shine on their life and they're going to receive what you say to them. Listen, we worry too much about planting and watering and picking. Amen. Hey, we need to quit worrying about who's doing what and we just need to get busy for Jesus. If I get to water, I say glory to God. If I get to reap, I say glory to God. It's all about Him. It's all about Him. It ain't got to do with me. Hey, it ain't got anything to do with you. It's got to do with Jesus. We're here to magnify, to edify, to glorify the name of Jesus Christ. That's what we're here for. It ain't about what we do and what I get to do and what you get to do. It's about what He, who He is. And that's what Isaiah is seeing in these verses of Scripture. He understood that there was a people that walked in great darkness. Today, if ever, we know that there are people that are walking in great darkness. There are people afar off from the, the, the Word of God. They're not living scripturally. They're not living biblically. They're not, have, they have no interest in the things of God. And we need to pray for them. We need to be that example before them. As I said, if our gospel be hidden, it is hidden to them that are lost. We need to show and shine for the Lord Jesus Christ. John eight twelve says this, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Can I ask you a question tonight? Where are you walking? Where are you walking? He said, I didn't say it, 
He said, the Lord Jesus Christ said, He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. What are we hiding? His preacher preached this morning. He said, hey, you know, talking about that shame, that sin when we hide stuff. Are we walking in darkness tonight? Hey, he said that we, if we are walking in Him, He's the light. He said with that we would not walk in darkness, but we have the light of life. May God help us tonight. Let's come clean. You ain't got to confess to me. Say amen. You ain't got to confess to me. You got to confess to Him. You can confess around this altar. You can confess right there uh, in your pew. But what we need is confession to be made for our sin, that we do not walk in darkness, that we're not making it a habit, that I am not making a habit out of a sin. Hey, there is a difference if a man falls down and a man lays down. Hey, if you fall down, praise God, get up. Don't stay there. Uh, but see, we lay down a lot of times and we say, oh, I just fell into it. No, no. Oh, no. Hey, we must come to that place in our life that we examine our own life. We'll never be a help to anybody until we examine our own hearts and our own lives. The Bible said judgment must begin where, church? At the house of God. Not in the world. God wants His people to get right. God needs us to get right so that we can go out into the world and shine and show that glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ upon hearts and lives. Hey, they see us. We're just a witness. Hey, but it's God's power through the Word of God that convicts them, that shows them the Lord Jesus Christ. May God help us tonight that we would not be followers of darkness, but we would be followers of the light of the Lord Jesus Christ, that we would walk in the glorious light of the gospel and that we would not walk in darkness. Verse number 2 it talks about the people had seen a great light. Hey, they seen the hope of Jesus Christ coming. They understood that, that Isaiah understood that he was coming. Second Corinthians four six says this: For God, who commanded uh, commended His light to shine out of darkness, shined in uh, our hearts and gave the light of the no uh, knowledge of the glorious or the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. It's God. It's all about Him. Nobody gets to take credit for it. It's all about Jesus Christ. It's all about Him. It's Him that shines and commanded that light to shine out of darkness and has shined on our hearts. Hey, it's Him. It's Him. It's Him that shows us who He is. It's Jesus and the Word of God, the power in the Word of God, the glorious gospel. But we see also in verse number 2, look right here, uh, verse number 2 quickly. It says that they saw the great light. It says, And they that dwelled in the land of the shadow of death, upon them has the light shined. I want to say to you, every one of us, every one of us tonight has dwelled in that valley of the shadow of death. Hey, it, we all, hey, listen, I won't scare none of you, but we all going to die. Okay? Hey, and, and if you're saved, you're going to go be with Jesus and everything's going to be great. Uh, but it, those people that dwell in the shadow of death had no hope until the glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ shined on their heart. Hey, let's talk about some of these names now. That's just warm up. Amen. We're going to talk about these names now. Talk about what Isaiah said that gave him a name. There's a lot about names, okay? There's names. When I'm gonna just, this is just, I just jotted down a few, and uh, you you think about uh, what that name means. Let's talk about. Let's let's say Billy Graham. Billy Graham. What comes to your mind? Awesome, godly man. Let's 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 think of another name. Judas Iscariot. Traitor. Betrayed Christ with a kiss. See, automatically a name means something. Oh, Henry Ford. Cars. George Washington. President, first president. Uh, Michael Jordan. Basketball. Elvis. Singer. Rock and roll. That's right. 
I mean, uh, you know, when we hear a name, whether we like it or not, there's, that means something. It has meaning behind every name. So tonight, Isaiah gives us names. He gives us what he is going to be called. And I want us to look at these names and ask God to help us in when we think about these names. The first one that we're going to look at, verse number 6, he said, His name shall be called Wonderful. Uh, this word, Wonderful, speaks of His person. Amen. We can all agree that Jesus Christ is wonderful in His person. Jesus Christ is wonderful in His mercy, in His grace, in His forgiveness, in His love, in His compassion. Jesus Christ is wonderful. If you know Him, you know Him to be wonderful. He's been nothing but wonderful. He's been nothing but good to me and you. Hey, we need to understand that. Also, it has to do with being uh, all together. He's all together lovely. We used to sing a song about that, I believe. He's all together lovely. Hey, you look at Him. Examine Him. However you look at Him tonight, church, He's wonderful. Look at Him. Examine Him. Hey, He's wonderful tonight. If we would ever uh, just stop and look at Him, how gracious, how merciful, how loving. Hey, He's wonderful tonight. Isaiah, seen Him coming. Hey, He said He's wonderful. Tonight, we need to understand, no matter what my circumstance, no matter what my situation, praise God, Jesus is wonderful. And Jesus is coming back after me uh, one day after a while. He's just wonderful. So we need to be reminded of that. No matter how we look at Him, no matter how we examine Him, we come up with wonderful. We can say tonight, He's a wonderful Savior. He's a wonderful Lord. He's a wonderful friend. Amen. He's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. But the meaning of that word wonderful goes a little further. It also speaks of His wonderful miracles. It also speaks of His wonderful works. All through the Bible uh, that we can find Jesus doing wonderful miracles. You think about the dead that He raised. You think about that mama carrying that boy out and, and uh, going out to the graveyard. And here comes Jesus and touches that casket, that coffin, uh, that beer is what they called it, a beer. Uh, and they and he set up. You think about how wonderful that mama thought uh, that Jesus was for giving that son back. You think about round the tomb of Lazarus. Uh, all his sisters are why, uh, crying and missing uh, Lazarus. And Jesus comes to the tomb and tells Lazarus to come forth. You think about how wonderful they thought he was. Hey, you think about all those times. Hey, you think about the lepers uh, that called out to him and it said, uh, have mercy on me. Hey, you think about how uh, the man with the withered hand and Jesus touched his hand and his hand straightened out. You think about how wonderful they think he is. But let me just remind you, hey, to you, how wonderful he's been to you. That when you called on his name, he saved you out of the muck and the mire of your pity sin where he found you in. He pulled you out of it by his grace and by his mercy. He's wonderful tonight. Amen. Hey, praise God, He's wonderful. He didn't leave us like we was. He didn't leave us where we was. Praise God, He moved us to a new place. He put us on a solid rock tonight. He's wonderful tonight. Hey, we need to see Him like Isaiah saw Him. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful miracles. The blind to see, the lame to walk. You think about, hey, that's us, church. We couldn't see without Him touching us. We couldn't walk a Christian life without Him helping us. Hey, we was dirty. I had leprosy of sin on our life, and He cleansed us and set us on a solid path. Hey, He's wonderful tonight. If we would understand tonight who He is. His name is wonderful. That's what Isaiah said. Isaiah said His name shall be called Wonderful. Then we think about the wonderful works that Jesus did. You think about that little lad that had that 
uh, five loaves and two, the Bible says, two small fishes. Hey, now see, if I'd have been us in the fishermen, we'd have said, I had two whoppers out there, man. I had two big ones. <laughs> you know, we're going to make it good. Hey, no. The Bible said two small fish. He took the wonderful works and break it and distributed it and everybody ate. He's wonderful in everything that He does, church. He's wonderful. Don't get your eyes clouded with this world's idea and opinion of who Jesus is. He's wonderful tonight. And we need to understand going into this Christmas season, He's wonderful. If I can afford a present for anybody or not, He's wonderful tonight. We put too much emphasis on what we do rather than what He does. Amen. If we ain't real careful, it becomes about us instead of about Him. I challenge you, keep Christ in your Christmas. Keep it about Him. Why, preacher? He's wonderful. Amen. That we would understand that He's wonderful. Praise Him. Praise Jesus that He is wonderful. The next thing I would draw your attention to is that He is, it says, wonderful counselor. Oh, my. It speaks of His compassion. Oh, my. His compassion. The Bible tells us they fail not. Glory to God. They're renewed every day. Hey, when the sun comes up in the morning, they're renewed fresh every day. His mercies, His compassion. It speaks of His guidance. Praise God tonight. You don't have to walk around and stumble in the darkness. He'll turn the light on for you. He gives you guidance. Uh, he's the counselor. That's what He does. He is able to advise. Let me say something about advice. I don't really think Jesus gives you advice. I think He gives you counsel. And see, a lot of times, I've had, I've had people come to me and ask me this or that or whatever, and I'll say, well, the Bible says this. And they say, well, I know what the Bible says, but I was going to find out what you say. I, you, know, you know what? That's somebody not wanting counsel. They want somebody to agree with them. They want somebody to condone what they're going through. Hey, and I, I, I don't have no opinion. Hey, I just want to give you God's Word. Hey, that's the counsel, only counsel that I can give you or anybody. Hey, but listen, He's the great counsel. He is our counselor. If you got a problem tonight, praise God, don't call Oprah. Amen. Call Jesus. Amen. Hey, get a hold of Jesus. Hey, we want to get a hold of everybody else. Get a hold of Jesus and ask Jesus what He would have you do. The next thing I'd say about counselor, a lot of times people don't want to receive the counsel that they hear. A lot of times people say, I know what the Bible says. What they're really saying is, I really don't want to hear that. I, I, I'm not interested. I'm not interested in following the counsel that He gives. Can I tell you, He's a good counselor. Amen. He gives us guidance. He gives us instruction. He gives us uh, counsel that we can follow. Counsel. When we get counsel, we must be willing to receive it. We must be willing to listen to it. We must be willing to follow the counselor's counsel. We must come to Him and not. Uh, his counsel is not to be argued about. Amen. His counsel is not to be uh, debated. His counsel is not up for debate. Hey, the Bible says it's settled in heaven. Amen. If it's settled there, we better get it settled down here. Amen. It is not up for debate. It is not up for my opinion versus your opinion. Because our opinion really don't matter. All that matters is what the counselor has counseled us in. And He has given us His Word tonight, church, that we have His Word. We have His counsel. You say, what is His counsel? His counsel is the Holy Word of God. I heard a preacher talking, I think it was on 106.9 the other day. And this preacher said he is in front of his church. 
And he said, the Bible. He said, what is this book called? And the bunch, everybody hollered out, the Bible. There's one kid, little I, th- I can't remember how old he said, five or six year old, said, preacher, that's the Holy Bible. Hey, that's exactly right. It's holy. Amen. Hey, these words uh, that are contained within these Scriptures are not my words. They are not your words. They're His Word. And it is not up for debate. It is not up for argument. It is not for me to wish, wash, and take, take and leave and pick and choose. Hey, we take the whole counsel of the Word of God. Amen. Because the Counselor, the great Counselor, has given us counsel. And it's the Word of God. It'll teach us about marriage. It'll teach us about love, one for the other. It'll teach us about the darling Savior. It'll teach us how to treat your neighbor. It'll teach you how to love your enemies. Amen. It'll teach you. That's what He does. He gives us counsel. And He gives us instruction in His Word. It is not to be argued. At one time, if people didn't agree with the way I saw something, I'd argue with them. Hey, it is not to be argued. And God showed me that when I, when I worked down at MDI. There was a Jehovah Witness down there, and he was leaving his propaganda everywhere, and I would unplug it and drop it in a trash can. And he would talk to people. And, uh, and uh, so one morning I decided, I said his name was Zeke, and uh, Zeke ain't never talked to me. And uh, I, I thought the next time I see Zeke, I'm going to talk to him. And uh, I seen him. He's a big old rascal. And uh, I seen him. I said, Zeke, I said, is that you leaving that stuff all over the uh, break room and uh, clock-in room out there? He said, yeah. I said, how come? Uh, I said, how come you ain't never talked to me? He said, well, you a Baptist preacher, ain't you? I said, yeah. I said, what's that got to do with it? I said, if it's good enough for everybody else, is it not good enough for me? So... So me and him started talking back and forth. I'd bring Scripture, he'd bring Scripture. I'd bring Scripture, he'd bring Scripture. It's back and forth, back and forth. And I was out in the parking lot, me and him punched out, got done the same day one time. And I said, Zeke, I said, if the Lord Jesus Christ would come down here right now and appear before in our presence, I said, would you bow down before him? He said, oh, no. I said, oh, you would. You just don't know you would. I said, you would. And it was after that that the Holy Spirit of God said, leave it alone. Don't bring him no more scripture. Don't talk to him about it. You just let it go. So the next time I seen him, I shook his hand. I said, Zeke, I'll be your friend, but I ain't ain't arguing with you about it no more. I said, it is what it is. I said, and I'm done. I said, I'll be your friend. I said, if I can ever help you, you let me know. I heard just a couple years ago that he went out into eternity. I hope somewhere that he come to the Lord Jesus Christ as his personal Savior. Uh, But it ain't worth arguing over. I'm not going to, I mean, it ain't worth arguing over. And that's, hey, he gives counsel to be received. If people don't receive it, then that's on them. I can't shove it down their throat. I can't make them do it. Hey, but he is, the Bible tells us, a counts, the counselor. Uh, the Word of God is the counsel that we need. Second Timothy 3.16 says all Scripture. Did you hear that? All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. It is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. You need instruction tonight? Get in the book. Amen? Go to the counselor. Hey, and he don't charge you a dime. Say amen. Hey, he don't charge you a dime. He'll talk to you all night long and won't charge you a dime. The next thing that I want us to see, I want us to see that he is the mighty God. Spoke it. Speaks of his power. Speaks that he is all powerful. The Bible says, Matthew 28, 18, Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power have I given unto you, uh, given unto me in heaven and in earth. All power. There is absolute power to save, power to forgive, power to keep, 
Hey, tonight, if you save tonight, He'll keep you. Amen. You don't have to worry about falling out. Praise God. He's got you in His hand. Amen. He has power. He has all power, the Bible tells us. Luke 1, 37 says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. He's able. He's all powerful tonight. Hey, you got a problem? You say it's too far gone. Oh, no. Hey, just let Jesus... Be the, go to Him for your counsel. He is the mighty God. Go to Him. He'll help you tonight. If you'll call on Him, He said right here in Romans 8 and verse number 31, it says, If God be for us, who can be against us? He has all power tonight. Amen. Hey, what do you need tonight? Hey, come to the One that has all power. He's able to help. He's able to save. He's able to fix. He's able to convince. Hey, we just need to keep doing what God's asked us to do. And let God be God. Let God do what He's going to do tonight. Hey, He's all-powerful. The next thing, He is the everlasting Father. Speaks of His preeminence. He's God in the past. He's God in the present. He'll be God in the morning. Amen. He's God all the time. He never takes a day off. He never slumbers nor sleeps. He never goes on vacation. Praise God. He's God all the time. Speaks of His preeminence tonight. I wonder tonight, do you know Him? Do you know Him? Listen, it's all about Him tonight. It's all about Him. I wonder tonight if we would come to that place in our hearts and our lives as we go in to this Christmas season that we understand He's the everlasting Father. What He does, He does for all eternity. Amen. He don't do anything halfway. Amen. He is the everlasting Father. He'll be there when the sun comes up. He's there when the sun goes down. Praise God. He's there all the time. His preeminence, His power. Hey, He's everywhere all the time. Lastly, Tonight, or lastly this evening, I wanted to get to this one. Praise God, this this might make this will help you. The Prince of Peace. Praise God. What the world's are looking for, and they can't find because they won't go to the right place to get it. They go into everything else trying to find peace, and it's found only in Christ. When you find Christ, you can pillow your head at night. Amen. When you find Him, you can rest in the middle of the storm. Amen. When you find Him, He's the Prince of Peace. He's the one. The whole world tonight is living the mostly in, con in confusion, in conflict tonight, seeking peace but don't know how to find it. Homes are in conflict, fussing with one another, griping, bickering, in contention about stuff that don't make a difference over nothing. And homes are in trouble. Homes are in shambles. May I point you to the Prince of Peace tonight. And His name's Jesus. The whole world living in conflict. People fussing nation, fussing with this nation. Nation fussing about this. The Arabs are throwing rockets into Israel. Thinking that's going to help some. That ain't going to help nothing. They need to sit down at the table and understand who the Prince of Peace is and come to an agreement that Jesus is Lord. Amen. They will one of these days, by the way. Amen. The Prince of Peace. So many of us seek temporary peace. Those that will, those tonight, jobs, think that it's going to satisfy them. You get tired of it. Just keep going. You know, I don't care how much money it is. It's work. It's a job. Hey, it, uh, you're going to get tired of it. Hey, I'm going to tell you, it's a, hey, a, a job. Hey, it ain't never been easy. Hey, Amen. It's a job. Hey, they seek jobs. They seek money. They seek relationships. They say, well, it didn't work with this, and I'll try this. And it didn't work with that, and I'll go get another one. And I'll go get another one. And I'll go get another. Well, let me give you a little counsel. Go to Jesus instead of going to another. Amen. Go to Him tonight and find your peace. 
That's my counsel tonight. If you hunting somebody, praise God, start with him. You probably won't move past him to find nobody, because ain't nobody else going to love you like him. Hey, man, drugs, people, temporary. If I just get a fix, I just get high, I can do this and I can do that. Teenagers, cut themselves, escape for a minute. Praise God. Quit cutting yourself and run to Jesus. Temporary peace. Praise God. Get on eternal peace that it knows no end tonight. That's what, Drugs, alcohol. The world says, oh, this will calm your nerve. It will help you sleep. Praise God. You can sleep in Jesus. Amen. You ain't got to have all that. Praise God. He said He is the Prince of of peace we need i need you need we need to seek after the prince of peace every day every hour hey when trouble comes up seek him don't look for a way out praise god look for jesus look for the prince of peace john 14 and verse number 27 i love this verse peace i leave with you my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let your heart uh, be, let your, uh, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Praise God. You say, what you going to do about that, preacher? I'm just going to peel my head tonight. What you going to do? You say, Washington's in a mess. The Democrats and Republicans, they can't get along. Well, here's a blue light special. They ain't never got along. That ain't nothing shocking. Praise God. Jesus has been the Prince of Peace from the dawn of time. It don't matter if they get along or not. He's in control and not them. Amen. You say, what are we going to do about the southern border? Praise God, I'm going to trust the Prince of Peace. I don't know what you're going to do about it. I'm just going to trust Him and look to Him as the author and finisher of my faith. The Prince of Peace. You have trouble pillowing your head tonight. You have trouble in your home tonight. You have trouble in your relationship tonight. May I point you to the Prince of Peace. May I encourage you to fall on your knees before the Prince of Peace. Hey, you, you say, what do I tell him? Tell him you love him. Tell him you need him. Tell him you can't do it without him. Tell him you need his peace. Not as the world giveth. The world's, hey, we used to have this saying when we was little, it says Indian givers, give something and take it back. Indian givers, you ever say, Am I, I don't mean to offend nobody. You remember that? Hey, hey, we say they Indian givers, they give you something and take it back. Hey, I don't understand all that anyway. I don't know why I even thought of it. Hey, man, hey, but I'm telling you, hey, that we, hey, that's the world. They give it and take it back. They give it for something. They ain't giving you anything they are going to require something back out of you hey but only jesus gives you the peace that you need and will never require anything just love on him hey that's all you have to do love on him trust him look to jesus it's all about jesus the names that isaiah gave in isaiah 9 6 all about jesus pointing to jesus Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. He's going to be wonderful. He's going to be wonderful. He's going to be the counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace tonight. May we tonight, may I, may you, may we tonight, as we begin, I think today's December the 2nd, unless I slept through a day, December the 2nd, going into Christmas, the 25th hammer down. We're going, people's going crazy. Shopping like crazy. Spending money. Having a time. You know, that's good. I mean, that's all right, I guess. But I want to tell you something. Does that give you the peace that you really need? When you wake up after you rip the presents open on the 25th, how long will it be before you say, I wish I had something else? I wish I had that. I wish I'd have got that. Temporary peace. Never going to satisfy you. Never going to make you happy. Never going to please you.
Jesus will satisfy you. Jesus will please you. More than anything I know, we need to seek Him. Through this holiday season, Christmas season, the first of the year, praise God, come June and July, we ought to still be seeking Him. Amen. It ain't just one month. For a Christian, this is everyday living. Amen. This is, this is where we live. Praise God, we drove our stakes in. Praise God, we set up camp right here. This is where we're at. Hey, we're just with Jesus. But I want to encourage you, it's all about Him. Don't get tangled up seeking other stuff that we know that Jesus ain't in. Go to the counselor. Ask Him. Ask Him if it'll be all right. Hey, ask Him. You say, well, I know what the Word is. I know what the Word says. Then, praise God, you don't have to ask. Just don't do it. Amen? Hey, do what He asked you to do. Obedience. That's what, that's what He's looking for. Hey, that's what He was looking for in Adam. That's what He's looking for in Mark. That's what He's looking for in you. We ain't building rockets. We ain't building rockets. Hey, He's made it plain. He ain't kept us in the dark. He said it's all about Him. Let's make it all about Jesus. It's all about Him. With every head bowed and every eye closed just for a few minutes of time, maybe God spoke to you. Maybe tonight you'd say, praise God, He's wonderful. He's my counselor. He's the mighty God. He's the everlasting Father. He's the Prince of Peace. Maybe tonight you'd say, "He's I don't have peace, preacher. I might need to come and gather around this altar or pray right there in the pew, wherever the Lord would have you to pray. Hey, and just do business with Him tonight. Do you know Him tonight is wonderful? Are you saved tonight? Have you been born again tonight with every head bowed and every eye closed just for a minute of time? Say, I know Him is wonderful, preacher. I know Him is wonderful. By raised hand, I know Him is wonderful tonight. He's my Savior. He's my friend. He's my best friend. He's my lover of my soul. Oh, He's the very best thing it's ever happened to me. Amen, church. He's wonderful. Tonight, do you need counsel? Do you need to know about a situation or a circumstance? Are you going through something in your life that you need help in? And everywhere you go, it seems like it just ain't the right answer. Maybe tonight you'd seek His counsel. Maybe tonight you'd come and ask Him, Lord, what I need to do about this? How do I need to handle my neighbor? How do I need to handle my friend? How do I need to handle this situation, this circumstance? Lord, how do I need to do this? What do I need to do? He'll give you the counsel. He'll give you guidance. He'll give you instruction tonight. Amen. He'll, un he'll help you understand where you're at. Amen. Hey, maybe tonight He's the mighty God. Hey, do you know He's mighty tonight? Maybe you need Him to move on your behalf. Maybe there's something going on. You say, Lord, I need this. I need you to move on their behalf. There's a situation. I need you to move. Hey, He's a mighty God. He's the everlasting Father. Do you know Him as that tonight? Hey, He'll fix it tonight. He's the everlasting Father. The Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace. Tonight, do you have peace in your heart? Do you have peace in your heart? Listen. Tonight, if you pillow your head and something happens in the middle of the night and you wake up in eternity, do you have that peace that you'll spend all eternity with Jesus Christ? Hey, do you have that peace in your heart that you save, that you know you save? Do you have that peace tonight that the Lord's with you, that you're in that right relationship with Him, nothing in the way, just between you and Him? Maybe tonight you just tell Him you love Him. Maybe tonight... You're in a good place. Hey, maybe you want to thank Him. You want to bless Him for it. He's holy tonight. It's all about Him, church. If you're, in, if you're walking in darkness, praise God, there's a great light. And His name's Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. What a wonderful name. There's that name been given. Every kneel bow, every tongue shall confess that He's Lord to the glory of the Father. Maybe tonight you just want to tell Him you love Him. Let's stand. As she plays just for a moment, there's some praying. You come, you mind the Lord. Father, we love You. We give You honor, glory. God, we thank You that it's all about You. Thank You for letting Isaiah...
pinned down, God, your wonderful names. Lord, that we could be encouraged tonight with who you are, what you are. God, I pray, Lord, you'd help us just to shine the glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ in a lost and a dying world. Lord, I pray for homes tonight. Lord, I pray, God, you'd help and touch. Lord, relationships. God, in this building, God, maybe nobody feels comfortable enough to say it, but maybe they'll say it to you. God, they need help tonight. They're in trouble. Father, I just lift them, lift them up for relationships. Lord, I pray, God, somebody might be in trouble. Lord, they need to know you're the mighty God. Lord, I pray they'd look to you tonight. Lord, whatever we need tonight, God, I pray, God, you've made yourself available. God, you've made yourself available to us. I pray we'd run to you like a child running to its mama. Oh, I pray we'd run to you. Oh, God, help us tonight to run to Jesus, the author and finisher of our salvation. We love you. We praise you. Oh, my. Maybe tonight you still need to come. You mind him. Maybe before we close the service tonight, every head's bowed and every eye closed, maybe you just slip your hand up and say, there, I have a need in my life, preacher. I'll not come to you, call you out, not embarrass you in any way. We'll just close in a word of prayer tonight. Say, I have a need. The Lord spoke to my heart, I have a need. Amen. God bless you all over the church. Amen. Amen. God knows. Oh, God knows tonight. Let's join together in prayer. Father, we love you. God, you're so holy. God, you know how to speak to us. God, we just give you honor and glory. God, we just thank you for your word. We give you glory for your word tonight, God. Thank you for your spirit, God, that deals with our heart. Lord, that don't leave us the way we are. God, you woo us to you. You love us tonight. Lord, I just pray you'd touch every hand that was raised. God, maybe some that wasn't raised, but God, they still raised it in their heart and said, it's me, it's me. But maybe God, tonight, you just speak to every heart. Give them that counsel. Give them that peace, God, that they so need tonight. Father, we'll thank you for it. We'll praise you for it. We'll love you for it, Lord. We'll bless your name for it. God, you're holy. We just want to tell you tonight we love you, Lord. Thank you for loving us and caring for us in the way that you do. God, you do all things well. We ask it and pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.